Hi guys, welcome to the first algebra lesson of the year, lesson 1.1, variables and expressions. Our objective for this lesson is going to be able to write algebraic expressions. All right, so before we get started, we have some vocabulary. Uh, first of all, the word quantity, that is anything that can be measured or counted. A variable is a symbol, usually being a letter, that represents some number. Algebraic expressions is a mathematical phrase that includes one or more letters. And a numerical expression is a mathematical phrase that includes numbers and operations, but no variables. Algebra uses symbols to represent quantities that are unknown or vary. You can represent mathematical phrases and real-world relationships using symbols and operations. All right, so problem one, writing expressions with addition and subtraction. And our question is, we want to know what is an algebraic expression for 18 more than a number n. So we're starting with n and we are adding 18. What is an algebraic expression for 25 less a number a? So we're starting with 25 and when it says just the word less there, that means we are taking away whatever is afterwards. So it's going to be 25 minus a. So that's gonna be one phrase that you wanna be looking for, whether it's more than, less than, or just more or less. They are meaning two different things in terms of the order. All right, uh, problem C, what is an algebraic expression for 74 less than a number F? So less than means we're gonna start with F and we are taking away 74. Okay, at this point we want you to pause the video Try the three problems at the bottom on your own. Once you have your answer, hit resume and we'll go through the work. So what is an algebraic expression for a number B added to a number A? So we're starting with B, we're adding A, B plus A. What is an algebraic expression for six less than a number N? So we're starting with n. We want to know what's 6 less than, so n minus 6. Lastly, what is the algebraic expression for the difference between a number n and 5? When we see that word difference, we know we're talking about subtraction. So we've got our number n and 5. Next up, problem number two, writing expressions with multiplication and division. Uh, what is an algebraic expression for six times a number n? We could write it as just six n or six dot n. Do not use the x for multiplication anymore. <clears throat> Never use that again. The reason for this is we use x as a variable almost exclusively and we don't want to be confused with our variables and our operations. So next up, what is an algebraic expression for the quotient of 18 and a number b? Quotient tells us we are doing division. The first thing we have is our numerator, the second we have is the denominator, so it's 18 over b. For all of you still stuck in the elementary grades, 18 divided by b, you're gonna see it this way in algebra. Yep, we are gonna use it as fractions. Fractions are our friends. What is an algebraic expression for the product of a number x and three? So product, we are multiplying. We always put the coefficient in front of the variable and we just write it like that, three x. You might start off writing what you see and then fixing it so that it's proper algebraic format. Okay. Now again, we've got three problems here that we want you to pause the video, try on your own, and then we're gonna resume it 
and go through the answers. So what is an algebraic expression for a number k divided by 7? So we have k fraction bar 7. What is an algebraic expression for the product of a number w and 23? Product, again, we're doing multiplication, so it's 23w. Next up, what is an algebraic expression for the quotient of a number x and a number y? So quotient is division x over y. Okay, moving on to problem number three, writing expressions with two operations. Now we're gonna be combining, so we need to pay attention to what comes first and what, what it's talking about. So, what is an algebraic expression for three more than twice a number x? So let's break it down. What two operations do we have here? We've got more than, so we're adding three, and we have twice a number x, so two times x. So when we write that in our proper form, it's two x plus three, okay? Letter B, what is an algebraic expression for nine less than the quotient of x of six and a number x? So we have less than, we have quotient. So quotient is division, we have six over x, and then we have nine less than that quotient, so it's minus nine. What is an algebraic expression for the product of four and the sum of a number x and seven. So we have the sum, x plus seven, is being added together, but we are multiplying the whole thing by four, so we're gonna put that in parentheses with the four on the outside. Okay. Again, at this point, pause the video, try these three problems on your own, and then resume it and we'll show you the answers. What is an algebraic expression for eight less than the product of a number x and four? So we've got the product of x and four, so that's four x, and we are having eight less than that, so we are subtracting eight. Four x minus eight. Letter B, what is an algebraic expression for twice the sum of a number x and eight? So we have sum x plus eight, and we are doubling that whole thing. So it is two times the quantity x plus eight. Uh, letter C, what is an algebraic expression for the quotient of five and the sum of 12 and a number x? So we've got quotients, so we're dividing. The, first, the part that came first was five, so that's gonna be our numerator and we are dividing it by the sum of 12 and a number x, so it's gonna be 12 plus x in our denominator. Okay. Next up, we have problem four, using words for an expression, so we're gonna take the numeric and go the other way and bring it back into words. So what is a word phrase for what you see there of 3x? And there are a variety of ways you could see it, say it, the example Mrs. Irzo is writing down is three times the number x. You could say something like the product of three and x. Words, right? Words. So next up we have letter B. What is a word phrase for what you see there, which is x plus nine? So you could say the sum of a number x and nine. You could say uh, nine more than a number x. So those would both be valid answers. Problem three, or problem C, what is a word phrase for 10x plus three? So 
Mrs. Zerzos writing three more than the product of 10 and x. So now at this point, why don't you guys pause the video and give these three problems a try. What is a word phrase for six over x minus three? So we could say the quotient of six and the difference of a number and three. What is a word phrase for x times y plus 3? We could say x times the quantity of y and 3. I think there's some others that we'll talk about in class. So if you came up with something else, because I'm running out of room. If you came up with something else, um, let's make sure that it gets discussed in your classes. Okay. Uh, letter C, what is a word phrase for 3x minus 10? We could say 10 less than the product of 3 and a number x. Our last two problem here, we've got problem number five, writing a rule to describe a pattern. We want to write the rule in words and as an algebraic expression that's going to model this relationship. So in letter A, a salesman gets hired with a $50 bonus to start the job, and he gets paid $10 per hour worked. And so we have a chart here where we have an example, two hours, and it gives us an example equation, four, six hours, and it gives us an example. So we want to figure out what is the equation or the expression for n number of hours, any number. That's our variable. So we just look to see where were our number of hours being worked plugged into the equation. Looks like it's inside that parentheses and being multiplied by 10. So that's where we're going to plug in n. So we start with our $50 bonus and we are adding the quantity of n, the number of hours worked, times 10. So in the proper format, x times 10, not adding. So we've got... I was trying to think of slope intercept form, it's not working very well. So we've got 50 plus 10n. Okay. So now we want to put this into words. And so we can say 50 more than the product of 10 and n. So if we're looking at uh, letter B, the table shows the cost of renting a scooter depends on how long the scooter is rented. Uh, and we, you can see we are increasing by a set amount each time. And it looks like we are going up $7.50 each hour that the scooter has been rented. So that means our base cost of renting a scooter before we pay for any hours is $10. Uh, and then we are paying $7.50 for every single hour that we rent it. So let's write that into an equation. Uh, we've got 
we're starting with that $10 base that we have to pay no matter what. And we are adding to it the product of 750, so 7.5, and our variable, which we're going to use h for hours. So 7.5 times the number of hours plus our $10 fee. All right, so we can write that as a word phrase of 10 more than the product of 7.5 and a number h. Okay, so this first lesson has thrown a lot of different concepts at you, uh, five of them to be exact. So what's nice about this video is you can go back and re-watch it. What, what we want you to do right now is kind of after going through this packet, rate your level of understanding. It, it's not, if you're lost, it's fine. If you are at a two, I think I have it, I might be ready for my practice, I found this easy, or if you think you could teach the lesson. We also want you to write down any questions. You should be marking things on that packet if you have a question, okay? We also want you to try to summarize. And the reason why we want you to try to summarize this is it's gonna help your brain start to get it stored into your long-term memory. So writing about math is one of the hardest things that we will cover this year is trying to write about math. So let's get started and see what we come up with. There aren't any right or wrong answers right now. We're just trying to summarize what we've learned in this lesson so far. We will see you in class.